Colossians 3 and 17. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all by Hashem Mashiach giving thanks to the Most High and the Father by Hashem Mashiach So all that we do and say is going to be in the name of the Lord and Savior. We give thanks to the Most High Power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob for everything. He's worthy to be praised for everything. Hallelujah. Yes. So let's look at Psalm 7 and 4. Because as I said, we, we look at what's happening to us now. And we have to have ourselves together. We've got to have our minds, spirits together to know how to operate. Psalm 7 and 4. If I have rewarded evil unto him that was at peace with me, yeah, I have delivered him that without cause is mine enemy. Let the enemy persecute my soul and take it. Yeah, let him tread down my life upon the earth and lay mine honor in the dust. You see what he says? If I rewarded evil unto him that was at peace with me, yeah, I have delivered him that without cause is mine enemy. And that's what our people do. That's what these uh, so-called pastors or ministers doing. Because they are our enemy, but they're trying to bring the peace, but we're not getting peace back, are we? So let the enemy persecute my soul and take it, yeah. Let him tread down my life upon the earth and lay mine honor in the dust. That's what he said. If he changed and have the spirit of what you see is going on today. With these gods that, or these idols, I say gods because they called, they, they named, they made up that word to represent their entities. And this is what happens to those that are trying to be righteous. And some, sad to say, are false leaders. They're not qualified to lead the Most High's children of Israel because, first and foremost, they tell them that they're. Gentiles. They're not the Israelites. They're Gentiles. So when you look at Psalms 35 and 12, giving all praise and glory to the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Say, they rewarded me evil for good to the spoiling of my soul. See? This is what the evil will do. The wicked people will do. You be good to them, and they reward you with evil. But they can't really come up with nothing that they can, David can say, hey, what did I do wrong? But they reward him evil for good to the spoiling of his soul. Hmm. Depriving him of his works. It's like he, haven't, like he did nothing. It's nothing, no different than it is now. Psalms 109 and 5. And they have rewarded me evil for good and hatred for my love. Come on. Let, let, think about that pastor there in uh, South Carolina. He, what did he say? He said, Lord said we got to love everybody. But did he get love for that? The demon wolf, roof, the demon wolf, wolf, <laughs> wolf, roof. <laughs> Because that's what he is. He said that. It's, it's amazing how the media put him saying, had him saying that. And he sat there for an hour listening to them pray and, and go through whatever they go through in the church. And then got up and started killing them. For my love, they are my adversaries. For my love, they are Satan's. Because Satan means enemy, adversary, or foe. For my love, they are Satan's. But I give myself unto prayer. And that's what they were doing. Don't they call the church a house of prayer? But for his love, I mean, he showed him love. He was sitting beside the pastor. You know that? He was sitting right beside the pastor.
That's what happens when you don't know your enemy. Psalm 17 and 3. Thou hast proved mine heart. Thou hast visited me in the night. Thou hast tried me and shall find nothing. I am purpose that my mouth shall not transgress. David's crying out. King David. See? Look at, uh, let's go back to uh, our four for brother uh, Joseph, look what it, what happened in uh, Genesis forty four and four. Well, I started one. It says, "And he commanded the steward of his house, saying, Fill the men's sack with food, as much as they can carry, and put every man's money in his sack's mouth." This is when. The brothers came in Egypt, and Joseph was right under the Pharaoh in position, and put my cup, the silver cup, in the sack's mouth of the youngest and his corn money. And he did according to the word that Joseph had spoken. As soon as the morning was light, the men were sent away, they and their asses. Listen, verse 4. And when they were gone out of the city, and not yet far off, Joseph said unto his steward, Up, follow after the men. And when thou dost overtake them, say unto them, Wherefore have ye rewarded evil for good? Now he did this. This is what Joseph did. Remember? He said, and put my, verse 2, and he put, and put my cup, the silver cup, in the sack's mouth of the youngest, and his corn money. And he did according to the word that Joseph had spoken. As soon as the morning was light, the men were sent away, they and their asses. So he had, they had Joseph materials with them. Verse 4, and when they were gone out of the city, they had left the city. Mind you, he didn't told the steward to put all these things, his things, in their sacks. When they had gone out of the city and not yet far off, Joseph said unto his steward, Up, follow after the men. And when thou dost overtake them, knowing that this, they don't know that, Joseph is their brother. They don't want to sell Joseph to the Arabs. And the Arabs sold him to the Egyptians. Straight up. You see? Say up. Follow after the men. And when thou hast overtaken them, say unto them, Wherefore have ye rewarded evil for good? Is not this it in which my power drinketh? It's his cup. And where, whereby indeed he divineth? Ye have done evil in so doing see and he overtook them and he spake unto them these same words and they said unto him wherefore does my power these words the most I forbid that thy servants should do according to this thing behold the money which we found in our sex mouths we brought again unto thee out of the land of Canaan how then should we steal out of thy powers House, silver, or gold. With whomsoever of thy servants it be found, both let them die. Let them die. And we also will be my power's bondmen. So now, they don't know what Joseph had them do. But he did this. I mean, mind you, they done sold them to the Arabs, Ishmaelites. And the Ishmaelites sold them to the Egyptians. He was in captivity, slave, and bondage under the Egyptians before he was raised up to be under the Pharaoh. In prison and so forth. So he said, okay. This what happened. Look at. Uh, the, the wicked Israelites to Moses. That's why I said we got to look at ourselves. Exodus 5 and 21. Verse 20. Verse 20. And then. And they met Moses and Aaron. Who stood in the way. As they came forth from Pharaoh. As Moses and Aaron came from talking to Pharaoh. And they said unto them. The most high look upon you. And judge. Because ye have made our savior. Our savior. To be abhorred. Hated. In the eyes of Pharaoh. And in the eyes of his servants. To put a sword in their hand to slay us. 
See? Why? Because when you look at verse 10, it says, And the taskmasters of the people went out and their officers, and they spake to the people, saying, Thus said Pharaoh, I will not give you straw. Go ye, get you straw where ye can find it. Yet not all of your work shall be diminished. So you find straw wherever you can find it, and your work better not diminish. You better keep on doing the same thing that you've been doing. That's what he told us, the children of Israel. So the people were scattered abroad throughout all the land of Egypt to gather stubble instead of straw. And the taskmaster has hastened them, made them do it fast, you know, saying, fulfill your works, your daily tasks, as when there was straw. See? They made it hard for us. But we remember what was the most high's plan. Hmm? The most high plan was to what? Make Pharaoh's heart hard against the judgment and the orders that Moses was bringing to him from the Most High. The Most High said, I'm going to make his heart. I'm going to make his heart hard. Look at Exodus 14 and 11. And they said unto Moses, I started at 10. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, drew near, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. When we left out of Egypt, here come the Egyptians, the Egyptians coming after us. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, which is near, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were so afraid. Mind you, they complained about the, the heavy labor that they had to, had to, had to work and, and doing the same task in finding whatever they can find to make the bricks. Complain, complain, complain. And accuse him. Exodus 14 and 10. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, drew near the children of Israel, lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. Our enemies marching after us. And they were so afraid. They was afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Most High. See? That's the time, like I said, when they get afraid, they're going to cry out to the Most High. They're going to get deeper and deeper. What we're dealing with, it's going to be like a woman in travail, it says. You watch, it's going to start happening closer and closer and closer together. See, they already planned things all the way for years, way past now. But here we are looking, looking at today, and you, a lot of you are all in the past. That's why you can't, you don't have no room for your future because you still all gathering yourself into your past. The past is just an experience. You got to do with the present to the future. You can't do anything about the past. It's already call back uh, yesterday, call back the next day before that, or so call back a month previous from now. You can't do anything of that nature. But you can look forward to your future. You can work hard for that. Verse 11, and they said unto Moses, because there was no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us out away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt us with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? See, and mind you, we was in hard captivity. A hard captivity. Yet, they're going to say, hey, you brought us out here to die. Is not this word the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? That's our people, man. Let us alone. They don't want to hear the truth. That we can serve our enemies, even today. All up in the political arena, all up in, in, in anything that you, you can think of and can't think of, Israel all up in it. Most I said, come out of her, they right in it. They all up in it. Doing the things that the most I said we shouldn't be doing. We not supposed to put nobody over us. We ain't supposed to, how we gonna be, gonna, how you gonna be righteous and you're dealing with a wicked system? How, how does that work? You're righteous, but you're dealing with a wicked system. That believe in things contrary to the word of the most high. How does that work? That don't work at all. It's not going to work. But we all caught up in it.
Verse 13, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to the glory, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again, no more again. And the Most High shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. So he's going to get the glory. Say, shut up and hold your peace. That's what he told them. Shut up and hold your peace, and watch the Most High power bring forth his glory. See, all this is to make the Most High name. That's why I, I, I'm here, but I'm still in the time that we live in now because the Most High all that he's going to do is going to have him a name. He's going to be all in all. Like he's all in all now with me now. You know, he's just got to be all in all with you. But you got to know him. You got to see and, and review all these things that he has done and exalt him in what he does. He's the one going to get the glory. That's what it's all about. You so caught up in yourself, you better get off yourself because who, who is it that can say they know they got their seat in the kingdom? Where is that? Please tell me. None of us. None of us can. Therefore, we got to work hard and harder to do the things we got to do that we can be worthy that our names will be written in the book of life, people. Because I tell you, on June the 17th, 2015, the judgment came upon those souls. At that time, you can't pray for them. That's what the scripture says. This time after death is a judgment. And the most I have everybody's life already predestined. Far as the time that you're gonna um, be able to um, be on this earth in these mortal bodies. Now look, Exodus 16, because we gotta go through this. I'm going here in the spirit because we gotta go through this. I want you to see how the mindset of the children of Israel is. You hear me say is, I ain't say was, is. Because there's nothing new under the sun. Look at the Exodus, the 16th chapter. I'm going to look at verse 2. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. So this is what we always do. Murmuring. Talking about them. Now, they didn't seen the most high. Through a Mashiach that was shy, the angels opened up the Red Sea. We walked across on dry ground. The Red Sea was open. We walked across on dry ground. They seen the plagues that the Most High had done to the Egyptians, and he didn't touch us. But he did it to the Egyptians. But we was all right. Through all those plagues, we was okay. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. So ain't no marvel that people going to murmur against the men that the Most High, the righteous men that the Most High has set up, that's going to live their life and apply this truth in their life. Yeah, they murmured against Moses and Aaron. They murmured against everybody. All the prophets and the apostles. A Mashiach was shy. They came up against. Come on. They came up against the Most High. <laughs> See, they murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to the Most High we had died by the hand of the Most High in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots, and when we did eat bread to the full. For ye have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. See? Your little bellies got a little hungry. So therefore they ain't used to fasting. They got to have everything they want. Like, like flesh pots. Yeah, we had it going on. We had a lot to eat. 
That's why the most high, he, he, he killed the big fat ones. The one that liked to eat a lot, he killed them. They was, they was dying first. Look, uh, Exodus 16. And uh, 35. And the children of Israel did eat manna 40 years until they came to the land, to a land inhabited. They did eat manna until they came unto the borders of the land of Canaan. See? And the Most High gave us foods that would satisfy our taste for whatever we wanted. Let's look at Exodus 17 chapter. Starting at verse 2. Wherefore the people which, excuse me, wherefore the people did chide or argue with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, Why chide ye with me? Wherefore do you tempt the most high while Mashiach that was shy? Because remember, he's here. Mashiach that was shy is right here with us. He's the one who's dealing with us. We are Mashiach. But he's coming with the word of the Most High. And he is an angel at this time. And the people thirsted there for water. And the people murmured against Moses, see? And said, Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us up out of, the, out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? See? Arguing with Moses. Arguing with their leader. So, what do you think? You think it's going to be any different with Israel now? And, this, and they in more wickedness than it was then? I'm going to tell y'all. Israel is really, really stubborn and rebellious. We reading about it now. So that's why you're looking at things happening to us. Now these are the ones that knew the law. He brought the law to us. And they still was not operating in the right spirit. Therefore, the most I killed them all. All the adults, but Joshua, of the tribe of Ephraim, and Caleb, of the tribe of Judah. So, verse 2 Wherefore the people did chide with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, Why charge ye with me? Wherefore do ye tempt the Most High? And the people thirsted there for water. And the people murmured against Moses and said, Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us up out of, the, out of Egypt? To kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? And Moses cried unto the Most High, saying, What shall I do unto this people? They be almost ready to stone me. It was ready to kill him. You ready to kill him? That's our people. And the Most High said unto Moses, Go on before the people and take with thee of the elders of Israel and thy rod. So each tribe had elders. Each, 12, each of the 12 tribes had elders, and the elders were 50 years old and over. Because we read Numbers 4th chapter, the ministry was from 30 to 50, and the elders were 50 years old and over. So he took the old elders, I mean, he always say deal with the elders. Always deal with the elders. Why? Because they're more mature. When you lived a long time, you have experienced a lot of times, I say it all the time, because they're Esau got 365 days of the year, and each day is an experience. You understand? So you're experiencing something, you're going through something, you just seen the things that's like right now, we're seeing what's happening right now. If the most high will, we we be still here if we're not all oh, hell y'all to the most high, but if we are still here, say some 20 years from now, people gotta read about what happened and what, what has happened, where we experiencing it now. You understand? Nobody got to tell you about reading a book about what you, we have seen and know that happened on June 17, 2015, when that Edomite went up in that church and killed nine people. 
We all know about that. That's what I mean. You experience that. So if you were living, you were you living during the time that Martin Luther King got killed? That day he got killed? Malcolm X got killed? If you wasn't, you don't know the feeling, you don't know what was happening, you don't know the whole story of all the things that was said, what was going on as far as we as a people, how we were treated. You can read about it all you want to. When you live it and you experience it, that's why a lot of people, they, they don't really understand things because they haven't experienced a lot of things. And it wasn't in the know of our people. You call yourself an Israelite, but what, what were you doing during the time that they was water hosing and doing the things that they were doing to us, beating us down and all that? What was your plight in that? Some of you weren't even born. Like I asked people, what was y'all doing in 1974? And we was telling them there's got to be some changes. You know, against what it says, come out of her, my people. We was coming out of her. Telling the people we got to come out of her and we got to come together in unity. Because of the way we was treated. And look at the way we treated now. Oh yeah, it's going to escalate. It's going to be like a woman in travail. It's going to escalate. It ain't going to no sign stopped. Say, it tells you, who's going to rouse us up? That's what he asks. Who's going to rouse Judah up? Who's going to rouse us up? What is it going to take? This is our people, though. First Samuel. Look at Saul. First Samuel. The 25th chapter and verse 18, we'll start at verse 18. Then Abigail made haste and took 200 loaves because David was going to kill her husband. So this woman named Abigail said, then Abigail made haste and took 200 loaves and two bottles of wine and five sheep ready dressed and five measures of parched corn and a hundred clusters of raisins and two hundred cakes of figs and laid them on asses. And she said unto her servants, Go on before me. Behold, I come after you. But she told not her husband Nabal. Because Nabal didn't want to help David. They didn't want to feed his men. They didn't want to feed David. David. David and his men, you know, watched over his, his cattle, his, his, his wealth, I'll say. And made sure that nobody touched it. And they asked for something to eat. He didn't want to give them nothing. Verse 20. And it, and it was so. As she rode on the ass. That she came down by the covert of the hill. And behold David and his men came down against her. And she met them. Listen at this. Now David has said, surely in vain have I kept all that this fellow hath in the wilderness. Say it's worthless for me to keep everything, to watch over his, his, his wealth, everything that he hath in the wilderness, so that nothing was missed of all that pertaining unto him. And he hath requited me evil for good. See? We call ourselves doing good, and here come the evil. So and more also do the most high unto the enemies of David. If I leave out all that pertain to him by the morning light, before the sun comes up, that, excuse me, before the light comes, excuse me, not the sun, because the, the light was there before the sun and the moon and the stars. The most high made light. Because light has nothing to do with the sun. And night has nothing to do with the sun. Sun go down, it still can be light. Light and dark, let me show you that so you see what I'm saying. Uh, in Genesis, the first chapter. Genesis 1 and 3. And the Most High said, Let there be light. And there was light. And the Most High saw that the light, that it was good. And the Most High divided the light from the darkness because before. The light came, in verse 2 it said, and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. 
And the spirit of the Most High moved upon the face of the waters. And the Most High said, it was all dark. The Most High said, let there be light. And there was light. No sun, no moon, no stars yet. And the Most High saw, that, saw the light, that it was good. And the Most High divided the light from the darkness. So he put the light that comes and takes away the darkness. And then the darkness come and take away the light. And the Most High called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Okay? The evening and the morning were the first day. So now, So now let's go, well let's, let's look, the most I made on the, this day, verse 6 it says, And the most I said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the heaven, from the waters. And the most I made the firmament, and the, divided the waters which were under the firmament, from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. The firmament is the sky, but the ozone left. And the most I called the firmament heaven. That's the second heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. So we, we are ready to the second day, which is the second thousand year. A day is a thousand years to the most high. And the most I said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. So he moved the waters out of the way so you could have, you know, the earth, the dry land on the earth. And the most I called the dry land earth. Here it is. And the, and, he, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. Because you know, the earth is three-fourths seas. And the most I saw that it was good. No sun, no moon, no stars yet. But we still got day and night. Okay? And the most I said, verse 11, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, after, whose seed is in itself. Upon the earth, and it should, it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. The seed coming from the male plant. And the Most High saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. So this is the third day. We got third thousand years so far. And the evening and the morning were the third day. Here we go. And the Most High said, "Now you got the earth. You got the." The fruit growing on the on the earth and the plants and everything growing on the earth. And the most I said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. That's how we, you know, look at the moon and the 30 days to deal with our holy convocations and so forth. And count the time, not the Sabbath stuff. And let there be, let them be for lights in the firmament and the heaven, and to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And the Most High made two great lights: the greatest light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Just when he did this, and the Most High set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the night. From the darkness, and the most I saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. So the fourth day, from the first day all the way to the fourth day. The four thousand year. See? So I just wanted to show you that so that you see that the light was created before the sun and the moon and the stars. Three thousand years later. The Most High created the sun and the moon and the stars. That's why you look at uh, 
2 Peter 3 and 8, it says, But beloved, be not ignorant. Don't be not knowing this fact of this one thing. That one day is with the most high as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. So he says the first day that was a thousand years. But it would be good if you had a, I had a chalkboard to show you how, you know, the breakdown of Genesis, the first chapter and the second chapter. And I guess we'll do it eventually. I guess I could have it in the back, back of me, perhaps, possibly you could actually look at it and work that out. Uh, going back to 1 Samuel, 25th chapter, and verse 21, that's what David said. Now David had said, surely in vain have I kept all that this fellow have in the wilderness. His, him and his men watched over everything that he had. Everything the ball had, David and his men was watching over it. Making sure that no other nation came and messed with his stuff. And this man wouldn't give him none to eat. That's why, his, that's why his wife Abigail loaded up all these things to bring to David. Because he was going to kill him. He said, now David had said, surely in vain have I kept all that this, man, this fellow had in the wilderness. So that nothing was missed of all that pertaineth unto him. And he had requited me evil for good. See? That's what these people are getting. Evil for good. Because that's how they were made. These, that's why you look at, that's why they aired not knowing the scriptures because they're doing what they're supposed to do. Look, Proverbs 16 and 4, the most I have made all things for himself. Proverbs 16 and 4. Yeah, even the wicked for what? For the day of evil. See? They're doing what they're supposed to do. What are they supposed to do? Evil. Oh, but y'all want them to be good. Y'all want them to do good. They ain't going to do no good. They ain't going to do things that's, that's they ain't going to follow the laws of the most high. Because they made to do evil. They made that way. You see that cat smiling. He's smiling. Oh yeah, I'm somebody. I'm going to go down to history. In his story. Verse 22, so and more also do the most high unto the enemies of David. If I leave of all that pertaineth to him by the morning light, any that pisses against the wall, if I leave any, any male, anything, any entity that's a male, if I leave anything that pisses against the wall. That's how angry he was. And when Abigail saw David, she hasted, she ran up to him quickly. And lighted off the ass and fell before David on her face and bowed herself to the ground and fell at his feet and said, Upon me, my power, upon me, let this iniquity be, and let thine handmaid, I pray thee, speak in thine audience and hear the words of thine handmaid. Let not my power, I pray thee, regard this man of Belial, even the ball. Just talking about her husband. Baal representing the entity and the spirit of the enemy adversary and foe, who was Shatan. This, this is what she's saying about her husband because he's off. She recognized the evil that her husband is doing. That's why she's trying to appease David so he won't come back and kill him. Kill him. She let down my power. I pray thee. Regard this man of Bilal, even Nabal, for as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. But I, thine handmaid, saw not the young men of my power, whom thou didst send. Now therefore my power, my master, as the Most High liveth, and as thy soul liveth, seeing the Most High have withholding thee from coming to shed blood, and from avenging thyself with thine own hand, now let thine enemies and they that seek evil to my power be as Nabal. And now this blessing which thine handmaid hath brought unto my power, let it even be given unto the young men that follow my power. I pray thee, forgive the trespass of thine handmaid, for the Most High will certainly make my power a sure house. Because my power fighteth the battles of the Most High, and evil have not been found in thee all thy days. 
trying to, you know, get on David's good side. Yet a man is risen to pursue thee and to seek thy soul. But the soul of my power shall be bound in the bundle of life with the most high thy power and the souls of thine enemies. Them shall he sling out as out of the middle of a sling. And it shall come to pass when the most high shall have done to my power according to all the good that he hath spoken concerning thee and shall have appointed thee ruler over Israel that this shall be no grief unto thee nor offense of heart unto my power either, either that thou hast shed blood costless or that my power hath avenged himself but when the Most High shall have dealt well with my power, then remember thine handmaid. So remember me, Abigail. Hmm. David ended up getting it with Abigail. So, look at 2 Samuel's. Two and eleven. The second chapter. So like the second Samuel is 11, the 11th chapter and we we'll start at verse 1. And it came to pass after the year was expired at the time when kings go forth to battle that David sent Joab and his servants with him in all Israel and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Ramah, Rabbah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem and it came to pass in an evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. She was a beautiful woman. He seen her bathing herself. And he went up on the roof and he was looking down and he seen her. Mind you, the men had went out to war against Ammon. And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? Hey, she's married to Uriah, the Hittite. And David sent messengers and took her. And she came in unto him, and he lay with her. For she was purified from her uncleanness. Meaning she didn't have her cycle. She had went through the two weeks that it takes to be clean from your cycle as a woman. And she returned into her house. So he, had, he lay with her. He had sexual intercourse with her, and then she went back home. So like that. And the woman could see, and sent and told David and said, I am with child. She got pregnant. And sent and told David, I'm with child. And David sent to Joab, saying, Send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. And when Uriah was coming to him, David demanded of him how Joab did, and how the people did, and how the war prospered. Mind you, he done been with his woman, and she's pregnant by King David. And David said to Uriah, go down to thy house, go down to your house and wash thy feet. And Uriah departed out of the king's house and there followed him a mess of meat from the king. So he sent him a lot of food. 
But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his power and went not down to his house. He didn't go to his house. David sent all this food to his house, but Uriah stayed at the door with the rest of the servants of King David. And when they had told David, saying, Uriah went not down into his house, David said unto Uriah, Camest thou not from thy journey? Why then didst thou not go down into thine house? Why didn't you go down to your house? Mind you, what is the plan? That's why you got to be in the spirit to see. David know that he impregnated his wife. Bathsheba. He done laid with her and she got pregnant. So what is David playing? Oh, you go home to your woman. You came from your journey to go home to your woman. You lay with her, then she'll be pregnant by you, by him. But if he don't lay with her, then he know that it can't be his baby because he ain't he didn't go home. He stayed at David's door. That's why David said, why didn't this thou not go down unto thine house? And Uriah said unto David, the ark and Israel and Judah abide in tents. And my Lord, my power, Joab, and the servants of my power are encamped in the open fields. Shall I then go into mine house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife? See? To eat and to drink and to lie with my wife, to have sex with my wife? As thou livest, and as thy soul liveth, I will not do this thing. And David said to Uriah, tarry here today also, and tomorrow I will let thee depart. So Uriah abode in Jerusalem that day and the morrow. And when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him, and he made him drunk. And at even he went out to lie on his bed with the servants of his power. But went not down to his house. He ain't went home yet. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter saying, Let ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle and retire ye from him that he may be smitten and die. Send Uriah out in the front of the battle and when he go out in the front of the battle, the, with the strongest and the, the most powerful warriors pull back so he'll die. Pull back from him so he'll die. And it came to pass when Joab observed the city he, that he assigned Uriah unto a place where he knew that valiant men were. And the men of the city went out and fought with Joab. And there fell some of the people of the service of David. And Uriah the Hittite died also. Now you see what David did. He already lay with the man's wife. He got her pregnant. And now he said, go home and lay with your wife. So this baby could be his. He could say, oh, that's your baby. So since he didn't do that, he sent him out in the front of the battle to die. Verse 18, then Joab sent and told David all the things concerning the war. And charged the messenger saying, when thou hast made an end of telling the matter, the matters of the war unto the king, and if, if, and if so be that the king's wrath arise, and he say unto thee, wherefore approaches ye so nigh unto the city when ye did fight? Knew ye not that they would shoot from the wall? Did you know that they would shoot from the wall? Who smote Abimelech, the son of Jerubbath, Seth? Did not a woman cast a piece of millstone upon him from the wall that he died in the best? Why went he nigh the wall? Why you go near that wall, knowing that they're going to shoot from that wall? Then say they, thy servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. So the messenger went and came and showed David all that Joab has sent him for. And the messenger said unto David, surely the men prevailed against us. And came out unto us into the field. And we were upon them even unto the evening, excuse me, the entering of the gate. And the shooter shot from off the wall upon thy servants. They were shooting at them from the wall. 
and some of the king's servants be dead. And thy servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. That was the whole plan. But you see how some of the men also of King David died right with Uriah. Not just Uriah, but some of the other men died also from King David's plan to kill Uriah. Then David said unto his, to the messenger, Thus shalt thou say unto Joab, Let not this thing displease thee, for the sword devoured one as well as another. Make thy battle more strong against the city, and overthrow it, and encourage thou him. See? Say, so now take the city. That was a whole plot that David plotted to kill who? Uriah, but he killed other men besides Uriah. And when the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, she mourned for her husband. And when the morning was passed, when she finished mourning for her husband, David sent and fetched her to his house. And she became his wife and bare him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Most High. And the Most High killed that son. He killed that son. And the next son that they had was King Solomon. That's why we got to put evil away from us. Deuteronomy 13. Deuteronomy 13. That's why when you read these Psalms and David's crying out, crying out, crying out because of what you just read. Hopefully you read it along with me of what he did. And the reason why, you know why the reason why he had him had, had to have him killed? Because he could, he could, the woman could marry once her husband was dead. Once he died, once he was killed, then she could become his wife. You see, she became his wife. He sent for her once she finished mourning over him. He sent for her. And she became his wife. Hmm. Sad, but it's real. So I look at 1 Corinthians 7 and 39. The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth. But if her husband be dead, she is at liberty to be married to whom she will. Only by Hashem Mashiach Yahweh Shai. See? That's why he was able to take her as his wife. But that displeased the most high, but he forgave him for it. But after, you know, the fact of, because you know the most high loved David. He loved David. That's why it tells us in Acts 13 and 22. And when he had removed him, when Mosiah removed Saul, the first king of Israel, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Fulfill all his will. Of this man's seed, that the Mosiah, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a savior, so we read about what David did. But we're a dysfunctional family. All throughout the Bible, we're dysfunctional. But the Most High said David was a man after his own heart, after his own mind, which shall fulfill all his will. And he brought Hamashiach Yahweh 
the savior of, of, of Israel through the lineage, the seed of David. That's why we got to put evil away. We got to, we got to, I mean, these are examples of saying that, you know, while we can't be thinking that we all that, when we come from this type of lineage, we're reading about it. And see, David, he he had to go through a lot. Masha Gawashai didn't see the struggle, but David did. Look at uh, Acts, the second chapter, and verse 29. Men and brethren, let, us, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his scepter is with us unto this day. Meaning where he was buried. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that the Most High has sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, I mean his his lineage, according to the flesh, not according to the spirit, but according to the flesh, that means through his sperm or copulation, to bring forth a body, he would raise up Mashiach Yahweh to sit on his throne. He seen this before spake of the resurrection of a Mashiach Yahweh Shah. Remember, he's a prophet. He seen this before spoke of the, of the resurrection of a Mashiach Yahweh Shah, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This a Mashiach Yahweh Shah hath the Most High raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. Let you know that they, they all seen up to 500 men seen him. And he was on the earth for 40 days. Therefore, being by the right hand of the Most High exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he have shed, he have shed forth this which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, see? David didn't, wasn't ascended into the heavens, but he said himself, the Most High said unto my power, who is a Mashiach, Yahweh Shai, this is in Psalms 110 and 1, if you want to read it. Sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes that's the, the enemies, thy foot still. See? Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that the Most High have made that same Mashiach, Yahweh Shai, the anointed Savior, the Messiah, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Mashiach, both the power and Mashiach for us. That's what we have. That's our power. That's only what we reach in the most high. It's through a Mashiach Kavashah. It's always been that way. Always been that way. But see, we haven't, we haven't looked at it, looked into it deep enough to see these things. See, look at uh, Deuteronomy 13 and 5. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death. Because he has spoken to turn you away from the most high your power, which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the most high thy power commanded thee to walk in. So shall thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. See, these are laws that the most high gave us. Verse 4, you shall walk after the most high your power, the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that he stated he is in Exodus 3, 15 and 16. And fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. It was Mashiach Yahushua, the word of the most high. And ye shall serve him, serve the most high and cleave unto him. See? See, if you don't do that, if this is not being done, then there's a judgment. Deuteronomy 17 and 7. 